people. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm so blessed by God. I am so honored by him. And I thank him. Thank you, Jesus, and bless you. So let's talk about this Jesus and how important he is in our lives. Your life in Jesus' resurrection. So when you think about resurrection, you're thinking about a new. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about that, too. It's, it's a brand new. It's what I always say all the time, that you're a new creature. You're not the old man, the old woman. You're not. Yesterday is dead and gone. How do you know that? The past is the past. So then why dwell on it? It's, it's gone. You, you can't bring it back. So it's gone. So stop bringing up your past. Hallelujah. Don't let no one else bring up your past to remind you of who you were. I say, notice, I said who you were. You're not that anymore. You're brand new. You're, you're made whole by Christ. You Think of that brilliant light. Oh, somebody, how he washed you and caused you to shine in his eye. I love that about God, how he cast our sins into the sea of forgetfulness, how he puts all of that murk, that stuff behind us. Can you do that? Can you also, because God has already done it for you through his resurrection, put all of that stuff. He took all of that stuff from you. So stop bringing it up. Don't let anyone else bring it up. But don't you bring it up. Because sometimes you can be your worst enemy. So then let's get right into the word. And we thank God this morning for the prayer. Hallelujah. And I trust you've received it already. So let's go to John 11. And let's talk about this Jesus, your life in Jesus' resurrection. John 11, verse 23. Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again, Lord, and the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. In other words, dear ones, you don't have, oh, somebody, you do not have to wait until the last day. Come on, somebody. We know that some people get saved in the ninth hour. Glory to God. Praise God for that. But you don't have to wait, hallelujah, to the ninth hour or the last day. You received this resurrection a long time ago, but you need to be reminded that this marvelous light that he brought forth in him for you, hallelujah, is part of your resurrection the Resurrection Sunday is simply to remind you that you are the marvelous light that Jesus has placed in you. So he says to Martha, he says, I am the resurrection. You only need to receive it. I am the resurrection and the life, your life, glory to God, the life that you now can live in abundance. Oh, glory to God, I thank him for this. He says, again, I am the resurrection in the life, in your life. He that believeth, notice, he that believeth, glory to God, though he were dead, though you were dead, though you were lost, glory to God, but now you can see. Notice this past I mentioned is gone, hallelujah, that is dead, glory to God. Anything bad in your past should be dead. Hallelujah. It shouldn't be allowed to be brought back by the enemy. And that's who brings your past mistakes back to you. It's simply the devil. But I say to you that Jesus says that you are now renewed because of his resurrection. He said, oh, Lord, forgive them for all of their sins. He didn't say one. He said all of their sins, for they know not what they do. God has forgiven you because he understood that you were ignorant. Paul said, now, brother and sister, I will not have you ignorant anymore because of the resurrection and the life. He that believed then, though he were dead, you shall now live. You, you shall, what, not die, but live. Because you know Jesus. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me, Jesus says, shall never die. Believe thou then this then you cannot die. You, you've already owed somebody. You've already died to flesh. Glory to God. 
but now you are living in the spirit, the fruit of the spirit. You now can take hold of life in abundance and the joyous glory of God because he loves us so much. He gave Jesus to us. Jesus, as we know, was a man. He was a man, though he was God, he was a man. He, he became a man that he could experience what we experienced. As, as mentioned, there's nothing new under the sun. Jesus was tempted in every area. More so, I say, because he was taken to a high place and tempted of the devil, the enemy. But yet he persevered through this. And again, I say to you, he was human. He was a man so that he could experience those same things that you have you know, are experiencing today. With that being said, notice something. The experiences then you can overcome. The past then is no longer a burden to you because now you have overcame. You, you ask just as Jesus did because as he experienced these things, then he went down to the pit of hell and took the keys from the devil, defeated him, just as you have the same power to say to the devil, get thee behind me, Satan, for man shall not live, oh, somebody, by bread alone, but every word that cometh from the Lord. So we can see all of this power that Jesus gave us. Hallelujah. Then he became the true God that he is, but he experienced life here on earth as a man. But you say, well, Pastor, he had all power. Yes, he did. Because the same power you can call on, he, he taught us. He, he taught the disciples on how to tap into the Holy Ghost power. Everything that he did, he reached out and called out the Lord. He called out God's name. And he thanked everything before he received it. He gave God thanks by faith, knowing that it was going to transpire because he did not waver in his faith. What am I saying to you? I'm saying that because of that humanistic or humanistic presence that he had, you have that same thing. But what did he do? He always called on God for the power to take hold and defeat the enemy. God would give him that power as he walked on earth as a human. He would call on God for the power, for the Holy Ghost power to succeed, to be healed, to prosper, to walk through life in victorious, oh, hallelujah, in a victorious manner. So we can see this resurrection is more than just the so-called thing, Easter. Hallelujah. Man labeled it as Easter. Yes, it is mentioned also as Easter, but I'm here to tell you it has a different meaning to the true believer. It is the resurrection of Christ himself. He died, rose again on the third day. That is powerful. How all of these miracles happen in that process. The angel showed up, rolled the stone back. Hallelujah. The sisters came and saw him and could not believe, but he told them many miracles and signs that was going to happen with the disciples. We know this, and I say to you, believe it. Believe thus this. Matthew 22 then, and the word of God, the gospel. Matthew 22, verse 31, he says, but as touching the resurrection of the dead, have ye not read that which was spoken unto you by God? saying, I am God of the God of Abraham, the God of our fathers, the father of faith. I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, oh, Jesus Christ, but of the living. Mm, Jesus, the Holy Ghost just spoke to you, dear ones. Notice, he says, I am not the God of the dead because he raised the dead so that they would be living. He's the God of the living. He's your God and my God because we are living. And the life that we live is the life of Christ. 
notice God. That's why we can call on God for miracle signs and wonders because he is the God of living. David says, told God, he says, God, will the dust praise you? Oh, Father, let me live and praise thy name. The dust, he says, cannot praise you. Oh, hallelujah. But living beings can. Or oh, even the rocks can cry out if we don't because they are living. Hallelujah. They, if you see rocks sometimes when they're in the water, they are living. You notice how can they look so miraculous and so different and so huge, yet they are living. How and why you say that, Pastor? Because they can praise God as well. Everything that has breath praises the Lord. Every knee shall bow, hallelujah, and honor God and praise him. This is why we say, if we don't praise him, the rocks will cry out. Glory to God, hallelujah. I'm here to tell you, as you've heard many times, I'm not going to allow the rocks to cry out for me when I have breath. Oh, glory to God. When I have a tongue that can say, praise God, hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving the saints of God, because you are the God of the living. Saints of God, let me help you just a little bit more. I feel that there's a stirring right now, even in your spirit, because these are things that you did not expect to hear. I thank God for that. But here, he says, resurrection then means to you. Resurrection means to you rebirth. It means restoration. You've been restored. Hallelujah. David asked God, shall I pursue? Notice who he asked. He asked God. He didn't ask a friend or a sister, brother. He asked God, shall I pursue? And God says, yes, you shall pursue, dear one. And it, everything shall be restored. Oh, glory to God. And it was. He lost nothing. So God is a God of what? Restoration. That's what restoration or resurrection means. It, it means rebirth. You have been made new. This resurrection is all about newness and a refreshing. That's why the Bible also says that he restoreth my soul. He, what he does, he refreshes you. He refreshes your soul. And everything that is hallelujah about you, he restores. Glory to God. You need only request as David did. Lord, shall I pursue? Shall I persist? And I shall yet win. But you need to learn and understand that God is waiting to hear what you have to say. It's a renewing, I say to you, a renewing of, of you. Uh, don't think of the old you and how you may have fallen down and fail. Don't think of that. Think of the new you that is has a bright and clear future. Notice, as I mentioned, this brightness of Christ. When he rose, he was in fine linen, so bright you couldn't even look up on him. And as no man that can see God, he can live because of the brilliance of God. But notice Jesus, hallelujah, allowed us to look upon him. And yet that brilliant, that brightness, oh, was bestowed upon us. So there's a renewing, there's a revitalization of Christ in you. There's a, there's a refreshing, oh, somebody. There's a goodness and a mercy and love. He said, bind thy mercy and thy truth around thy neck. Mm. Write it on the tablets of your heart. And so shall thy find a good understanding and favor with God and man. Notice all of this stuff comes from Christ. It came from his resurrection. Though he taught us as a human, he became a true and powerful God. Although, again, in the beginning, and he was, this boy was birthed only by God, by the Holy Spirit. But yet he walked as a man, and every time he needed to call on the true power, he called on God through the Holy Spirit. So the connection was always there. I say to you, the dear ones, these dear saints, you have a connection 
when you realize the resurrection of Christ. God then, Jesus, as I said, you represents the rebirth, the restoration, the renewing, the revitalization, but Christ represents the renaissance. He represents the re-verification. He verifies you. He represents the reappearance in your life. In case you sometimes forget, he represents the reappearance. He appeared again, isn't, didn't he? He died, but yet he reappeared. So that reappearance, hallelujah, that renaissance represents a new period. Wow, God, hallelujah. It re renaissance represents a new time. Oh, God, hallelujah, a new time in your life. Not the old years, but the new time in your life. It doesn't matter how old you, but the new time. Somebody needs to say, I'm going into a new time. The time has changed for me. I am recognizing that I have a new time. I am now powerful in the Lord God because he's giving me a new time, a new period to praise, to worship, but to succeed. Oh, glory to God and not ever fail again. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. You see, you fell down in the past, but now you've got up saints of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I can't oh, stop praising him this morning. Hallelujah. You need to grab hold of this. There's a renaissance of Christ. Hallelujah. And he's trying to put this in you that you can walk in this thing. There's a re, oh, somebody, a re-verification of who you are. He, he, the reason he rose again to give us this new life. Notice he took away these sins, but then he gave us victory. He took the keys from the enemy. He defeated the enemy. You now have that same authority to put your feet, I say, up on the devil's head. Glory to God. I, I guess I'm preaching to myself because, oh, somebody needs to really get this. The reappearance then of Christ. He reappeared to you. You notice when you was lost and Christ came in and spoke to your heart, your mind, your spirit, and then you got up. Oh, glory to God. You committed then. You, oh, you said, thank you, God, for saving me. Thank you, God, for delivering me and bringing me to a new place. Have you not? Oh, have you forgotten how he delivered you, how he brought you to a new? He's a resurgent. Christ is a resurgent. What is resurgence? It's triumph. Oh, glory to God. You are resurging. You are now in a place where you can really grab hold of the triumph in Christ. Hallelujah. Some of you have just been waxy daisy about all of this, but you understand. You see now that the word is really true. The spirit of God, the spirit of the what? The living God. Only, hallelujah, he all receives blessings from the living. He's the living God, so he only deals with the living. Oh, somebody, everything that has breath lives from the, oh, from the smallest to the largest, from the creepy and crawly things to the giants, oh, somebody. Everything that has breath praises the Lord. So you are the living, hallelujah, and God is a God of the living, not the dead. And even when those that were dead, even when Christ rose, there were some that was in the grave, but guess what he did? He rose them. Oh, God. He brought them. He caused them to be the living. He told what Ezekiel, he says, Ezekiel, can these bones live? Oh, glory to God. Can these bones live? He told him. And Ezekiel says, thou knowest, Lord. In other words, God only deals with the living. If you're dead, oh, Jesus Christ. If you were dead, you are now made whole and you are now living. So even if you are in the, was in the dead zone, God has brought you out of that through his resurrection. So you begin to see. So beloved, I say to you, I say to you, beloved, do you know how much authority you have in your home? Uh-oh. Let me go right to what I always say to your Kool-Aid. I'm, I'm going right to your house right now. I'm in your house. You've allowed me to, to be in your home this morning, and let me say thank you. I'm so grateful that you did that because I know God is speaking to you now. So I'm loving the fact that I'm in your home. Hallelujah, I don't care how and what you thought your home was. 
whether it was clean or unclean. And I know because now I'm there. Oh, glory to God. The Holy Spirit has just broke in and now is in your home. So now it is made new. You are made new. So you need not worry. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Don't look at anything right now but Jesus because Jesus doesn't care. Oh, somebody. All he cares about is you being renewed. All he cares about is that you're understanding that he is full of love for you and your home, that he's full of love for you and your family. He's going to bless you. Hallelujah. He's going to make everything all right in you. Why? Because you recognized the resurrection of Christ. So therefore, he, he can cleanse us. He makes us whole. Hallelujah. Remember, he already brought us out of the murky mire. So don't sit there and think about the past or whatever it is. That's why I'm always saying, don't look to the left, nor to the right. You have a chance now, a new opportunity to make things right, not only in your life, but in your family's life. So I love it when Christ enters into our home, whether he used me or some other, some other being, some other way. I'm glad about it as long as he does it, because it's not about me. It's about Christ Jesus. So beloved, you know how much authority then you have in your home? You, you beloved, you can take authority in your own home. You can make things, oh, all you gotta do is invite Jesus in. Let him be the cornerstone of your home. Begin, begin then to not only clean your home, but to clean yourself. He, he does this for us. Oh, somebody, you need only pray the prayer. Lord, what did we say? Father, enter into my heart. Etch your word into my heart. Oh, that I might not sin against you. Jesus, only that simple prayer will cause miracles to happen. Signs and wonders will take place. Oh, somebody, you may have thought, well, I, I, I can't do it alone. But no, you cannot. <laughs> but Jesus can. You need only invite him into your life. And he will begin to clean it up. He will begin to make everything what new. He will give you the brightness in your heart. Saints of God, know this. God always starts and works internally. He begins to work on you in your heart, in your internal parts. Hallelujah. Remember the word of God. He says that make me know wisdom in my inward parts. Inward parts, he says. And then, and make me then make, with make me to be known or make me to know wisdom in my hidden parts. You need only ask God and he will come in. He will come in. So then you have authority in your home. Did you know also you have authority in your own body? You need only speak to your body through Christ Jesus. Oh, you need to rebuke the devil, saints of God. I say to you, your body is now being made new. You're now being cleansed. Oh, somebody, you have authority now. In Christ, you recognize who Jesus is. Oh, you recognize Yeshua. You recognize Yahweh. You recognize the great I am. You recognize that, oh, you're made new. You recognize the great Jehovah. Oh, somebody. You recognize this in your body, in your home, in your jaw, at your jaw, in your relationship and in your full life. Through, through this is the resurrection of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah! So then through all of this, you have this resurrection power. Hallelujah, the authority now. You can rest assured that you can take authority. Some of you, oh, glory to God, thank you. Hallelujah, Pastor Darlene and I had the pleasure, the honor, the privilege, oh, thank you, Jesus, to watch miracles happen. And oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, the saints home yesterday. They, they, they shared with us their home yesterday. And we got to see the miracles of God and the anointing of their home. I'm so privileged and honored by it. I know God loves us when he does that. He allowed me to see a wonderful testimony, a brand newness in their home, a new love brought into their home. So then they took authority through Christ Jesus in their homes. They used the anointed oil to invite God into their homes. You need only speak the word only 
and invite God into your homes. The resurrection of Jesus. He is the king that came to redeem kings and queens. He is the king, I say again, that came to redeem kings and queens. Oh, God is good. God is good. Death, then, let me share, because if you look at your screen, death cannot hold us. <laughs> death is defeated. Let me share with you, and I've shared some of this with you. You cannot, I say, die the death. Death was created before Adam. It was in the garden before Adam. You say, well, wow, pastor, that's deep. It is. Death was created before Adam. It was inherited in the creation. It was created. Death is and was a hopeless, I say, a hopeless void. Jesus, or I should say, Judas Zacharias was part of that. He was a hopeless being because he betrayed not only Christ, but even he did not take the opportunity to repent because of the fact that he died the death with nothing to show for it except misery and the devil. God says in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, Notice, death was created before Adam, but the Lord, the Lord God, took the man and put him in, in the Garden of Eden to work it and to take care of it. And the Lord commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you, not, but you must not, I say, must not eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat from it, you will certainly die. God, again, I say to you, created death, then created Adam. Notice death was before Adam in the garden. And then Adam, Adam, God gave death to Adam. Why? Because we have dominion. So God gave dominion to Adam. And in that, he gave death to Adam. Adam had dominion over death, just as we do. Oh, somebody, through the resurrection. Adam had dominion over death. God gave death to Adam. He gave him authority also over death to give it life or to leave it dead. Wow, praise the Lord, just broke a yoke. So in other words, we have power over death. We can give it life over us, or we can leave it dead. I choose to leave it dead. For death is death, and it is dead. We do not have to give it authority over us. We take authority over it. How? Through the resurrection of Christ. Christ took authority over death. We have the same authority and power to do so. Oh, then, oh, God, I thank you, Father. When you say, Hallelujah. You, you need to say and stay attached to the source. Death cannot affect you. If you stay attached to the source, who is the source? God, Lord Jesus Christ, for he has the power. We need only, hallelujah, attach ourselves to the source because he has the power. Ephesians 1 talks about it this way. For this reason, even and ever since I heard about your faith. See, it is your faith that's causing you to really take hold of this message. I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love for all God's people. Notice a lot of you, because we've been praying for one another, has gained a new latitude, a new attitude about people. You're beginning to love people now because you're beginning to pray for them because God requires us to do this, saints of God. Jesus prayed for us, and yet we were sinners. He decreed that we can become saved. I have not stopped then giving thanks for you because of this mighty miracle blessing that you've taken hold of, remembering you then in my prayers. I thank God for that, because Pastor Darlene and I are mandated, mandated. We are required to pray. 
for you. I love that about God because he never lets us forget it. Ever since we took hold of the ministry, this is something that he's elevated us to, to pray in all earnest for you. I don't ever want you to think that you cannot call us or reach out to us because we are here, mandated, required to pray and stand with you and what you are about to take hold of. I keep asking that God, our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation. That's what this all is all about. It's a revelation about the word of God, and how much power and authority you have so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope of which he has called you. The riches of his glory, the inheritance in his holy people, you in me. And in his incomparably powerful or great power for us who believes. See, it's all about this faith and believing. I say to you that God has given us a newfound belief, a newfound trust, a newfound hope, a newfound faith in him. That that power is the same as the almighty strength he exerts, which he raised Christ Jesus from the dead and sit him at his right hand in the heavenly realm. Oh, saints of God, hear me. Hear me in all of this. Matthew 16 talks about it like this. From that time on, Jesus became, not only became, but he began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hand of the people, at the hand of the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that they, and that he must be killed on the third day and be raised to life, to the true life of Christ. Jesus has risen, saints of God. He has risen in your life. Notice I said this is the res resurrection in your life. Somebody needs to just hold themselves right now with both hands and say, I am now in the resurrection of Christ. I am made whole and new. Every ailment that troubles me, every situation that was uh, uh, on me or tried to be take hold of me, I now rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I now take hold of the resurrection because I am made new. I am made whole. I can do all things in Christ that strengthens me. Be ye encouraged, saints of God. And God will also strengthen your heart. Hallelujah. Those that hope, I say. In Jesus. Notice, saints, after the Sabbath, at the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. And yet, as I mentioned, it was a miracle. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled the stone back and sat on it. His appearance was like what? Lightning, the brightness in you and in me. His clothes were white as snow. The, the guards were so afraid of him that they shook and be, became light. Mm. They became so, they would keep the whole somebody. They were so afraid of the bright light. They were afraid. They were afraid of this wonderful miracle that was happening. The angel said to the women though, do not be afraid for I know that you are looking for Jesus who were crucified. He is not here. He is risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, witnesses. Go witness, saints of God. He has risen from the dead and has gone ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you this. Romans chapter 10 I love Romans because this is the prayer, how we all became saved. And it it's worth repeating. Romans 10, 8 and 12. Brothers and sisters, my heart, desire, and prayer to God for the Israelites is that they may be saved. 
you being Israelites, Habakians, for I can testify about them that they are zealous for God, but their zealous or their zeal is not based on knowledge. Notice, since they did not know the righteousness of God and sought to establish their own. Notice, this is why he says, and the word of God, hallelujah, lead me, Lord, not into my own righteousness, but for their righteousness, for your righteousness, for your righteousness, God, for your righteousness, not theirs, not mine, but for your righteousness, Lord, for your great namesake. So since they did not know the righteousness of God and sought to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. Notice, Christ is the, is the culmination of the law so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. Righteousness is counted to us as faith. Faith also is counted to us as righteousness. So when you have faith in God, you're, oh, somebody flowing in God's righteousness. Moses writes about this. He writes about this righteousness that it is by the law. The person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that is by faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down. Or who will descend to the deep? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth. Notice on your tongue, the word. It is in your mouth and in your heart. You need only speak the word only. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead. You will, you will, and you are saved. But I, I, but what I've said, the word is nigh and it's near you. It is near thee. Even in thy mouth, you need only speak it. And in thy heart, that is the word of faith, which we preach. This is what we preach. The word, the word, the word. Somebody say the word. Then you need only what? Speak the word with your tongue, with your mouth only. Even when you're not feeling right or you're feeling down, you're not in the right place or you're feeling some kind of way, you need only speak the word only. You need only say, if you don't have anything else to say, say, praise God. Oh, say, I plead the blood. Speak the word. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I remember my wife used to say, I said, honey, I ain't got no words. She says, well, just speak the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need to only speak the word. Hallelujah. And God moves in. Hallelujah. We always used to say, well, he wept. Oh, glory to God. And he did, didn't he? He wept food for us. Speak the word. Find a word that you can speak, saints of God, and watch God move. Watch him come in. And that situation and change your life. You watch your whole life be resurrected. That if thy shall confess with thy mouth the Lord and shall believe in thine heart that God has risen him from the dead, thy shall what he say. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And God says, What? He will deliver us and give us what? His salvation. For the scripture says, then, whosoever believe on him shall not be ashamed. So then we shall not, I say, be ashamed for trusting and believing God, knowing that this resurrection, this whole thing was for us. That he could go down, defeat the enemy, uh, defeat death, hallelujah, and give it all, uh, oh, somebody, give us all that authority that Adam had in the garden in the very beginning. He had authority over death. He had authority over the garden. Jesus came to give us all of that back. Can you imagine how beautiful the garden was? Can you imagine having that authority again over these wonderful things of God? And we do. You need only look around and you can see the beauty of his holiness around you. But you have to speak the word. You have to trust God. You have to know him. Hallelujah. You must have this faith that Jesus is telling us. So who... 
ever, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed, for there is no difference between Jews and Gentiles. I say that all the time. Jesus then grafted us in, even through the resurrection, before the resurrection. He engrafted us in. He told us, oh, somebody, he, oh, somebody. Remember, he said that we are his brothers. He adopted us so that we can, too, have an avenue with the Father. We can now call God Abba Father. We have that same power, saints of God, through this resurrection, through because why we believe. So whosoever then believe on him shall not be ashamed. For there's no difference, I say, between Jews and Gentiles. The same God is Lord of all and richly bless all who call on him. Notice when you recognize him and call on him. Everyone who calls on the name of our Lord will be saved. And Jesus, holy and mighty name. Amen and amen and amen.